war arises, new technologies and strategies quickly become necessary to counter the enemy's natural advantages, such as possession of a superior technology or the familiar terrain of the country they defend. The Vietnam War was no different. Soon after the United States landed its first combat troops in 1959, military leaders realized that they would need a new strategy to defeat an enemy capable of attacking U.S. forces and disappearing immediately into a dense and inaccessible environment. To meet this challenge, the American military developed a new strategy of air mobility, based upon the refinement of a technology which first appeared in the 1920s, the helicopter, vastly expanding upon the use of this new technology during the Korean War solely for medical evacuations. U.S. military strategists adapted the helicopter for multiple uses as troop transporters and gunships, as well as this earlier role. The rapid transformation of the simple Sikorsky H-5 medical evacuation helicopter into the ubiquitous Huey transport and the fearsome Cobra attack helicopters as a part of a new air cavalry both shaped and exemplified the American War in Vietnam. In 1961, President Kennedy decided to send two helicopter units into Vietnam in Operation Chopper. During this one-day assault, more than 1,000 paratroopers were airlifted into a village outside of Saigon, and the Viet Cong were so overwhelmed by this first large-scale aerial attack that they were able to put up little resistance before fleeing into the jungle. Although this first air mobility maneuver had gone off almost flawlessly, there was still a hitch. The helicopter's piston engines regularly broke down and spare parts were hard to find. The army, recognizing these problems, set up a contest. They wanted a helicopter that could carry 800 pounds, go 227 miles without refueling, and maintain a cruising speed of 114 miles per hour. The Army also wanted the helicopter to be capable of multiple configurations, allowing it to serve different purposes, including inserting troops into combat zones, transporting supplies, and evacuating wounded. Over 20 companies entered the competition, and Bell was chosen as the winner, with the Huey. The Huey, or UH-1A, was originally used unarmed as a troop transporter. Under heavy Viet Cong fire, however, the pilots quickly requested armaments on their machines. The first weapons fitted to the Hueys were machine guns and rocket launchers intended to suppress hostile ground fire while escorting transport helicopters into battle. Based upon the success of these field-modified UH-1As, the Army developed the UH-1B, the first production gunship Huey. The extra weapons on the UH-1B, however, increased its weight and degraded its performance. This prompted the army to create the UH-1C, and a model equipped with more power and fitted with wider blades. This change dramatically improved the maneuverability of the Huey. As a result, the UH-1C was used more frequently as a gunship than a troop transporter, since it was needed to protect the army's new UH-1Ds, a model introduced in 1961 which would carry up to 12 fully equipped combat soldiers. This model, along with the more powerful UH-1H, became the workhorse of the air cavalry for the remainder of the war. With the issue of the what is now perceived to be the D model Huey to the field, to units in the battlefield, was probably the greatest thing that has ever happened to the military as far as medevac evacuation. It has saved thousands and thousands of lives. Even with their more powerful engines and wider blades, however, the Huey UH-1Cs were not very adept at their expanded role as a gunship, since they presented a large and bulky target for Viet Cong fire. A pure gunship was needed. Bell thus developed the AH-1G, or the Cobra. This fearsome machine was powered by a 1400 horsepower jet engine it could reach speeds up to 171 miles per hour. The AH-1G required only a two-man crew, one pilot and one gunner slash co-pilot, who operated a bottom-mounted turret containing a minigun. Eventually, a grenade launcher and optional side-mounted rocket launchers were added. Although the Cobra's main system of survival was its speed and agility, it was also fitted with side-mounted armor. Not surprisingly, the Cobra continued to evolve during the war, gaining a more powerful engine and more efficient blades, but throughout it maintains its original purpose and design. Perhaps even more consequential for America's air cavalry strategy than the development of the Huey as a troop transport and helicopter gunship was the Huey's extensive role in saving thousands of American lives as a medevac helicopter. It will take him out there where he doesn't have to walk to get there. It will go get him when it's over with and bring him back. It will supply him with food, water, and ammunition while he's out there. If he is wounded, it will bring him back to a medical facility that can save his life. 
Huey transports would ferry soldiers into combat, accompanied by Cobra gunships that would fly ahead and provide close tactical support by rocketing and strafing the landing site. But once ground combat began, Huey air ambulances, each capable of carrying up to six stretchers and accompanying medical personnel, swooped in to evacuate American wounded. In this role, the Hueys replaced the Army MASH units to the Korean War, which could not cope with the challenges of the job in Vietnam. For unlike in Korea, where casualties could be flown to field hospitals located just behind the battle lines, in Vietnam, the absence of clearly demarcated combat zones prevented the establishment of safe, nearby medical facilities. Hughes instead had to fly into heavy enemy fire to pick up the wounded and evacuate them to relatively distant hospitals. The crucial role that Hueys would play in America's air cavalry strategy, in fact, was revealed very early, when the U.S. Army engaged North Vietnamese regular troops at the Battle of Ai Drang in 1965. Continually frustrated by the enemy's ability to launch sudden attacks and then melt back into the countryside, U.S. forces, on this occasion, seized the opportunity to pursue retreating Viet Cong back to what the Army believed to be their home base in the Central Highlands. Huey Transports airlifted several companies of soldiers into a small clearing in the dense forest canopy. Fanning out from this landing zone, scouts quickly captured an enemy soldier who revealed that they were encampments around the Americans, not simply small units of Viet Cong, but more than 1,600 North Vietnamese Army regulars. Since the landing zone could only accommodate eight helicopters at a time, the Americans found themselves both vastly outnumbered and faced with unavoidable delays in gaining reinforcements. Eventually, however, more troops were airlifted in despite increasing ground fire from the now alerted North Vietnamese. During this time, men evacuees cycled in and out, dropping off ammunition and other supplies and evacuating the wounded. The next day, Huey transports managed to insert a second division into the now ferocious and even desperate battle, but this time into a newly created landing zone. The first was now unusable on account of enemy ground fire. Fortunately, these troops arrived undetected by the North Vietnamese and inflicted heavy losses upon them. Eventually, American troops redeployed yet a third landing zone, from which transport Hueys and medevacs continued to run resupply and medical evacuation missions. Finally, on the third day, the North Vietnamese broke off the fighting and retreated, thanks to the Huey, as well as combined Army, Navy, and Air Force bombing and napalm strikes. The Americans had held their positions and inflicted devastating losses on the enemy. The Huey had resoundingly proved its effectiveness in meeting and defeating the enemy on its own terrain. Although not yet available for deployment at Idring in 1965, the Huey Cobra, or AH-1G, likewise played a crucial role in countless engagements after its introduction into Vietnam in 1967. Its role was to accompany transport and medevac Hueys to landing zones and hose them down with its machine guns and rockets. It would then remain to provide close in-air tactical support. One notable instance of this role occurred during a particularly fierce battle on March 6, 1969, north of Saigon. As part of a coordinated air assault against suspected enemy positions, two Cobras escorted six transport Hueys to the landing zone, strafed it, and then circled while the troops unloaded. Once on the ground, the troops radioed the gunships to report a LZ Green, that there were no enemy troops nearby. But when two of the Hueys later returned with reinforcements, the Cobras got an urgent call. The LZ's red! The LZ's red! The troops had, in fact, been ambushed. Almost immediately, the two Hueys changed roles from troop transports to medevac, and were quickly joined by four additional Hueys, and by eight more Cobras, flying low over the increasingly fierce battle and maneuvering to avoid swarms of Hueys desperately evacuating the wounded soldiers and ferrying in reinforcements. These eight Cobras poured thousands of rounds of minigun fire and 2.5 rockets into the Viet Cong. But the next morning, having suffered tremendous casualties, the enemy broke off the fighting. Thanks to the Cobras, what might have otherwise been a devastating ambush ended as an American victory. In these and countless other engagements, the Huey and Cobra allowed the U.S. military to wage a brand new type of combat, a lightning-fast mobile warfare that allowed U.S. commanders to counter the enemy's previously unchallenged ability to choose the time and place of battle. These amazing technical innovations, based upon decades-old technology, but developed at an astounding pace by the harsh demands of a war fought in a faraway land of inaccessible swamps and jungles, have forever changed the way in which the United States wages war and the way in which it saves the lives of its wounded soldiers. It is no overstatement to claim that the Huey and Cobra helicopter both inevitably shaped the Vietnam War and changed the face of combat, and combat medical missions forever. Hello, Roger. Hello, Roger.